I'm San Diego County Supervisor Dave Roberts, and this is the 75th anniversary of this historic building that we're in, and we're just so pleased to be able to host this forum here today. Um, I first have to start and thank the county staff and our deputy sheriffs. They have been phenomenal in helping pull this event off today. So gentlemen and ladies, thank you all so much for your hard work in such a short period of time. For the past eight years, I had served on the Solana Beach City Council up north of here, and I had gotten interested in the issue around San Onofre. And three weeks before the nuclear power plant stopped operating, I had a chance to go tour it. And I try to tell people I'm not the reason they shut it down, but it was an, it was an interesting tour to go out and, and see the, the, the plant. And I had gone to see the plant because I had heard particularly from my Solana Beach constituents, that they were concerned about what was going on. And I had talked to such people as our former mayor, Doug Sherris, who's with us today, and Torgan Johnson, Don Mosier, the former mayor and council member in Del Mar, Bart Ziegler and others. They were concerned. Those that had children said, we're really concerned about the future and what this means to us. And when you think that eight million people live within 50 miles of this plant, I felt it was really important for no matter what level of government I was serving that I start getting smart on this issue and start asking the tough questions. Well, this past January, I became the first new supervisor in 18 years, and it's my job to ask the tough questions with my colleagues. And that's why when I was approached and asked would I host this event here at the county, I said, yes, I believe we need to ask these questions. And when I started... <laughs> And when I started working and hearing from folks, I knew that we needed to get all levels of government involved. Folks don't care whether you're a council member, a mayor, a supervisor, a member of Congress, a senator, or a president. They want us all working together because this is our homes. This is where we live, and this issue is too important to ignore. So I'm really pleased that we've pulled together a phenomenal lineup, and we're really pleased to welcome a great leader from Japan who is at the highest levels of his country's government during its crisis when their nuclear power plant melted down, the former Prime Minister, Naoto Khan, and sir, we welcome you here today. We're also pleased to welcome here the former Nuclear Regulatory Commissioners, Gregory Jasko and Peter Bradford, nuclear engineer Arnie Gunderson, Kendra Urich, um, nuclear camp who's the nuclear campaigner for Friends of the Earth. And I'm also pleased to have a former fellow colleague who is a mayor of Santa Ana. And we were talking prior to getting this started today, what it's like serving at the grassroots level. When you think San Diego County, we're the second most populated county in California, the fifth most populated county in the United States. And when you think that this area of Southern California is one of the most populated areas in the world, it's critical that we all work together. And um, I'm really pleased to introduce our moderator for today. He's the mayor of Santa Ana, and he's also chair of the Energy Committee at the Conference of Mayors, the Honorable Miguel Polito, who will be our moderator today. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Supervisor Roberts. I know um, you mentioned to me earlier that you're the first supervisor here in, in 18 years. And it's just so wonderful to see the work that you're going to do. You also told me you went from a staff of one to a staff of 10. I know all 10 are going to be very busy because you have a lot of energy. And I, I am so thankful that you're hosting this and inviting us all here to um, address these important issues. Um, as I begin, I want to take a moment and thank the uh, Samuel Lawrence Foundation. I understand that they've been very helpful in putting this together. And, um, and then without further ado, I, I just want to get into what we're here to talk about. And, and you know, the fact that we have Naoto Khan, um, uh, such a distinguished uh, gentleman that um, uh, was serving as prime minister during the critical critical time that we had, um, you know, with the uh, with the accident at, at Fukushima, I think it makes us all just realize what a wonderful place we live in. 
but also how quickly that place could change if we had serious problems. And, and I know that when I was speaking to the Prime Minister earlier, he said, make sure you mention how much he loves San Diego and, um, and how nice the people are and how such a, you know, a great time he's having. So I just want to invite you to Santa Ana and to Orange County when you're done here, because you will love us as well. And, um, and I'll tell you, I think it's important that we're working together between Orange County and San Diego counties, because this impacts all of us. So, so let me, if I may, sir, as, uh, as part of the formal introduction, uh, just state for the audience, that uh, I, I think it's very important the fact that you declared the need for Japan to end its reliance on atomic power while you were prime minister, and that you 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 dedicated uh, yourself to the promotion of renewable uh, energy sources, and and that you know when when you resigned in August of 2011, you in essence um, you know went on to serve the Democratic Party of your country in order to garner support for alternative energy. And, and so we're eager to hear from you. Um, we're so delighted to have you here. And I know you're going to have a couple translators. I think one tells you what we say. Another one tells us what you say. And we have no idea what either one of them are saying. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm sure it's going to go very, very well. They're both very good. So with that, let me please turn it over to you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm honored to be here in this position and take part in this gathering. First of all, to Mayor Polito, I would like to make a promise. I will come and visit you in Santa Ana. Thank <laughs> you. I have 50 minutes to speak today, and I'd like to speak especially on the events uh, that occurred after 2011, March 11th. 3 uh, on March 11, 2011, at 2.46 p.m. In, in the House of Parliament building, we felt a huge, huge uh, earthquake. The huge chandelier above us was uh, swinging like a, like a chime, and we all thought it would fall. So finally, the uh, swaying from the earthquake was over, and the emergency headquarters underneath the parliamentary, uh, the parliamentary uh, area was under emergency uh, lookout. 最初に地震の規模あるいは津波の警報などが at first, there was the tsunami warning signal and only the earthquake warning signal. That's all we had. So he was relieved to hear the very first information from the nuclear facilities was that it had without any emergency incident, had uh, gone offline without a problem. And he was very relieved to hear this. However, 
However, one hour later at the Daiichi, which is the very first, uh, the first four plants of Fukushima, there was completely information, uh, completely different information coming in, and it was not looking good. でそのさらに20分後にすべての冷却機能が停止をしたという情報が入りました。That, that えー、この電源喪失と冷却機能が停止ということが何を意味するか、私にもその知識がありましたので、本当に背筋が寒くなる、そういう覚え思いをしました。And what are we going to do? I immediately thought there was a chill that ran down my, down my spine. What are we going to do in order to cool these reactors? So, as everyone knows, when、uh, the reactors go offline, there is absolutely no way to cool them、uh, naturally. 自己崩壊熱によって長期にわたって熱が出ます。So as long as time goes by, it just gets worse and worse, and the heat continues to rise. 特に停止直後の原発では、冷却が止まると、その熱によって圧力容器の中の水が蒸発してなくなってしまいます。The biggest problem there with the、uh, continuing heating of the, of the reactors is that the steam from the remaining water that's there to cool it down completely evaporates. 実際に福島第一の一号浮きは、冷却機能が停止をして、約4時間のうち、当日の20時にはメルトダウンを起こしておりました。Especially reactor one, we heard four hours later because of a lack of water, it did begin to melt down. しかし、ソリマイルの事故ではメルトダウンの段階で止まりましたが、福島原発ではメルトダウンでは止まりませんでした。Three Mile Island, we know, we know now that they were able to stop things before a complete meltdown. We were unable to do this at Fukushima. この厚さ20センチぐらいのこの圧力容器。そのものを溶かして、えー、溶けた燃料は圧力容器から外へ出て、格納容器の底にドタドタとこう落ちたメルトスルーを起こしたわけです。The containment vessel is about 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters. Yeah. 20 centimeters thick, and it just started melting through and started melting through the corium very slowly. そして圧力容器の底の約厚さに二メートルのコンクリートをその熱でえぐり始めました。And in continuing this process, there is a two meter thick concrete containment vessel which also began to leak. もし、えー、このコンクリートを突き抜けて、えー、溶けた燃料が外に出ていれば、もう誰も近くに近づくことができなくなってたでしょう。And if you had a complete breach of this two meter concrete barrier, there is no way that anyone would even be able to come close to make efforts, emergency efforts to contain it. So then we started adding water. Uh, we started pouring water from various areas onto the melted, to the, to the melted、uh, nuclear fuel, onto the spent fuel that was melting through in order to try to contain this disaster. So, in the next year, 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 the next year. Two years later, we are still in the same situation, making efforts at doing this very thing, trying to keep the spent fuel pools cool, adding water in reactor one. We're in the same situation. If we are in the same situation, we can see that we can see that we can see that. The、uh, radiation exposure is so terrible that if a human being comes anywhere near this area, in two minutes they would be、uh, killed. 
3.11 のちょうど24時間後の翌日にはその1号機で水素爆発が起きました。そしてさらに一日置いた3月14日には3号機で水素爆発が起きました。そして翌15日、3月15日、東電がこれ以上対応できないので。第一サイトから撤退したいということを申し出てきました。しかしもし東電が第一サイトから関係者を撤退させたときには、もう誰もがこの第一サイトをコントロールできなくなります。福島第一には6基の原発と7つの使用済み燃料プールがあります。12キロ先の福島第二サイトにはさらに4基の原発と4個の使用済み燃料プールがあります。私はチェルノブイリの事故に関しての知識が若干ありました。チェルノブイリの場合は4号機が爆発を起こしました。しかし、事故を起こしたのは原発でいうと1機だけです、1つだけです。もし、えー、福島の場合に第1サイト、第2サイト合わせて、10基の原発と11の使用済み燃料プールがコントロールできなくなったときに、放出されるであろう放射性物質は、チェルノブイリの何十倍にも達するだろう、そのことを私は考えました。What he thought was, if in Fukushima the 10 reactors with 11 spent fuel pools, if these were all to explode, it would be そうなったときに、例えば東京を含む地域からも人々が逃げなければなくなるのではないかと考えました。実際に原子力政策を推進してきた原子力委員会の委員長であった近藤氏に最悪のケースについてシミュレーションを当時依頼しました。彼がその後、私に出してきたレポートによれば、最悪のケースでは、原発から250キロ圏、約140マイルでしょうか、その範囲の人々が避難しなければならないという報告書が届きました。その範囲には東京も含まれます。東京 was included in this area. そしてその範囲内に住んでいる日本人の数は5000万人に上ります。
So the only so if such a such a scenario were to happen, there would only there would be f only five hundred thousand people left. 現在16万人の皆さんが福島原発事故のために避難をしています。At the present time, there are 160,000 people that have been evacuated from Fukushima. As a result, people have had to flee from their jobs. Family members have been spread out all over the country, and the very fabric of the society in Fukushima, their very lives have been completely disrupted and turned upside down. If 500,000 people had to evacuate hospitals, schools, jobs in this whole process, it just would have been, um, it, it would have been terrible. Pardon me? 50 million people in a worst case scenario. If they would have had to evacuate their jobs, schools, all of the very functioning mechanisms of the infrastructure during this process, it would have, you would have had more problems evacuating the hospitals and the schools because of the evacuation. And at the same time, over a long period of time, it would have affected Japan, the whole entire fabric of the country, in the same respect. Until March 11, 2011, I was very, I thought carefully about the safety of nuclear power. My focus was on the safety. How can we safely and effectively use nuclear power to benefit the society? この 3.11 の事故に遭遇してからは考え方を180度変えました。However, after Fukushima, my whole mindset about nuclear power has changed 180 degrees. 確かに飛行機が落ちた場合に多くの人が数百人の人が亡くなることもあります。また自動事故で何人かの人が亡くなることがあります。For example, if an airplane crashes, I look at the loss from the, from the deaths that result from an airplane crash. しかし、一つの事故で、えーまあ、日本の例で言えば、国土の3分の1の地域から逃げていく、あるいは人口の 40% が、えー、その場所から逃げる、そのことが必要となる事故というのは、原発事故以外で言えば、戦争を除けばありえない事故だと思っています。However, in an, in an accident such as this nuclear accident, you have a situation where 40% of the population leaves their area. It affects one-third of that geographical area. It is um, much, much worse than the, than the scenario of the falling plane or of a war, of an actual war. So and therefore, we be he began to think that there is only one way to deal with this risk, in one way to effectively deal with 100% this risk of uh, mass destruction. There's one thing I thought about it. So, uh, 原発を使わないでもいい社会を作るそのことです。And the most important thing that I realized was we need a society that has no nuclear power.
Thank you. そしてそのことは十分に可能なことです。And this is very, very possible. 事故の起きた後に、我が国でも太陽光、風力、バイオマスといった再生可能エネルギーを拡大するための制度を作りました。After the accident, it was very, very important to、uh, begin to implement renewables,、uh, natural energy, including solar, biomass, wind. Okay. And before the accident, The, uh, before the 311 accident, aside from hydro propulsion, that sort of renewable energy, there was only 1% of resources were devoted to other renewables. しかし、えー、その制度ができて、今約半年になりますけれども、太陽光発電だけで、その半年間で原発 2.5 基分の計画が進んでます。原発 2.5 基分分の量、あの風電量の。Okay. And in the six months since this,、uh, since this system of implementing renewables has been instituted, we have been able to access the amount of 2.5 nuclear reactors harnessing of power through solar energy generation. そして、えー、風力についても、今、海の上に浮かせる大きな風力発電の計画が進んでいます。So こうした再生可能エネルギーの拡大は、経済的にも大きな効果をもたらします。And we are beginning to see that economically this just makes more sense. The renewables are making more sense from the economic standpoint. その例はドイツに見ることができます。We can see a very good example by looking at Germany. ドイツは2022年までに全ての原発を止めることを決めました。And Germany has decided by 2022 that they will completely be phased out of nuclear power. そして2050年までにはすべてのエネルギーを化石燃料もやめて、えー、再生可能な自然エネルギーで代替したいというそういう目標を立てました。And their goal in Germany is by 2050 to work toward the goal of no fossil fuel energy generation. Germany is really on the road to getting rid of nuclear power. However, the economics pose very many questions. 皆さんもご存じように、今、EU 諸国の中で最も安定的に経済成長を続けているのがドイツであります。Knows, however, knows, Germany, Germany また、我が国では、原発によって、生まれる電気の料金が、コストが、えー、安いという考え方が今なお根強く残っています。The problem in my country is that concerning nuclear power, among the thinking groups that are in power, there is still the, the mistaken thought that the, the nuclear power generation is cheap. しかしこの考え方は明らかに間違っています。But it's completely wrong. この計算には事故が起きた時の保証などは入っていません。The calculation for such costs do not take into account any budget at all for what happens, where do the costs come from, where does the money come from for 
、taking care of everything after an accident. さらには、使用済み核燃料の処理にかかる費用も入ってません。Nuclear waste, dealing with nuclear waste and spent fuel, there is no budget for dealing with this. So these costs are not in the calculation. まあ、特に日本は地震の多い国でありますので、それを最終的に処分する場所を見つけることは、世界のどの国よりも難しい国であります。Japan is a country marked with fault lines, earthquake fault lines, and marked with a history of terrible earthquakes. It is that much harder to find a place, a repository for such nuclear waste and spent fuel. In the world, the world is a very important place to find a place to find a place to find a place. The biggest repository for spent fuel is presently in Finland. Finland no doko? Onkaro. Onkaro. Watashi wa sono kiroku ega wo miyashita. He'll talk about this、uh, data. And... Oh, he saw a documentary on this repository in Finland. Sono dai mei wa, no nyon mei dewa, juman nen go no. 安全という題がついてました。The title of this in Japanese is After a hundred thousand years. What happens to this repository after a hundred thousand years? なぜ10万年かといえば、塩積燃料の中に含まれているプルトニウムの放射能の強さが半分になるのに。2万4千年かかります。And why? Why are we talking about 100,000 years after an accident? It's because plutonium, plutonium's half-life is 24,000 years. 4分の1になるのにはその倍の期間、8分の1になるのにはそのさらに2万4千年。つまり16分の1の強さになるのに約10万年かかるわけです。And the calculation for this. After one fourth of the plutonium reaches that one fourth life, another, another 24,000 years. One tenth, another 24,000 years. And so finally, you come to the calculation of one sixteenth equaling 100,000 years. つまり十万年間人間から隔離した形で管理する。In other words, it's It's us, the humans, the, it's mankind that needs to babysit this nuclear waste for a hundred thousand years. So, in the case of the people who are in the world, they are in the world, and 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 they are 子どもたち、孫たちに危険なものを残して、しかも大きな経済的負担を残すことは、私は我々世代が取るべき道ではない、倫理に反することだと思っています。And so what I believe is leaving this cost, as well as the danger, the risk to our grandkids and to our progeny, Is not, not only the risk, but the danger and the responsibility and the financial cost is absolutely ridiculous. Scotia, I'm going to say, Fukushima Genpat, Jiko, no, gain, について, eh, Moshe, I'd like to, eh, I'd like to talk now about the, the causes for the actual accident at Fukushima. この原因は 3.11 の前に、えー、ほとんどすべての原因が存在してました。Most of the cause of Fukushima Daiichi accident lies in what happened before March 11th, 2011. もともと福島第一のあるところの地形は海面から35メートルの崖でその上が高台になっていました。
35 meters of Okay, so the actual facility is built on a 35-meter cliff above sea level. So こう海面から10メートルのところまで土を切り取って高さ10メートルの海面から10メートルのところに6つの原発を設置しました。And 10 meters above this, we've taken soil and replaced it for an, an additional 10 meters above that. And that's where it's built, the facility. In other words, the idea that a tsunami would not come above this extra 10 meter barrier, the, the soil that it's built on, was the thinking of the time before the accident. え、今回と同じような大きな津波が数百年前に来たこともあります。オッケー。However, Okay, and why? If we have this information, why did we build it 10 meters above sea level? It's all about economics and being close to the ocean, it's important to cool these spent fuel rods. Therefore, having the 10 meters, just the 10 meters away, it's closer to the ocean, easier to get that water to cool the spent fuel, and all those decisions were based on cost and business. Mata, America, the 9-11 no terror kogek na to, America, the terror nyoru zenden gen sohitsu o sohte shite taisaku otareta to. So, in a similar light, in the United States, we had the 9-11 disaster, and as a result of this, there were many, many different programs imp implemented, agencies implemented, dealing with terrorism. So, this information was the information of the Department of Defense the Department of this same information was, uh, of course, came into the Nuclear Safety Commission on the Japanese side as a result of 9-11, and they began to think of what to do. しかし、当時の我が国の政府の姿勢は、日本ではそうしたテロが起きることはないので、それによる前言前言喪失については考える必要がないと。However, the politicians took this information with a grain of salt, saying, we don't have that sort of terrorism. We don't really need to prepare for any sort of a disaster like this. And in my opinion, if we would have put in, if we would have implemented safety precautions, preparing for such terrorism or tsunami, that there is a possibility that this could happen. We wouldn't be in the, in the position we are in today. I'd like to talk about the foundations of my thinking, the very base of how, how I'm thinking about this disaster. So how how do how does mankind um, in manipulating nuclear 
the 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 nuclear in, in manipulating nuclear how how can we uh, coexist with this nuclear energy how i began to think about this プルトニウムという物質はま自然界にはほとんど存在をしておりません in the natural world, plutonium does not exist in, in naturally uh, above ground, around manned. この物質が地球上に現れたのは、これはあの安子さんや他の皆さんの専門ですが、今から約七八十年前ではないかと思います。七八十年。え、七十年ぐらい前だと思います。the substance of plutonium, we can refer to um, Dr. Yasko uh, and, and the other professionals here on this. However, we've only been around plutonium, humans dealing with this, for 70 or 80 years. Now,この地球上に生存している生物は地球の環境に適応したものだけが生存していることは言うほどもありません。今地球上に生存している人間を含む生存している生物は地球の現在の環境に適応するものだけが今生きているわけです Yes. Right now, mankind is dealing with the resources we have and we've been able to adapt to the natural resources. もしこの地球がもっと放射能の強い星であったらあるいはもっと放射能に強い生物が生き残ったかもしれません。あるいはもし地球に酸素がなければ酸素以外のもので生きる生物が存在したかもしれません。and with, without oxygen, we need to look at the history of um, organisms on this earth. Were there, were there organisms that were equipped to uh, live without oxygen? Looking at all these factors, how are humans dealing with this? In the 45 million year history of the Earth, the only, the only remaining living organisms were the organisms that were able to adapt to the changing environment, the global warming, all of the changes in our oxygen, all of the changes in, our, in the elements that keep us functioning and metabolizing. その地球の環境というものをプルトニウムというものは根源的にその条件を変えてしまうそういう性格を持っています。And what I believe is because of plutonium and its recent uh, the the advent of bringing plutonium into the environment of the Earth is basically. Uh, I believe that we just can't uh, coexist. もちろんプルトニウムだけではありません。現在福島ではセシウムがたくさん残っていて、それによる放射線障害が将来に向かって大変心配されています。And of course, it's not just plutonium, but radioactive cesium. In the in the case of Fukushima, that completely puts our uh, our adaptability for radiation, contamination, and exposure and in a completely new uh, realm and dimension. そういった意味で、地球との環境と人間が共存することに対して、人間自身がその条件を変える、そのことを and so we return to the basic premise that 
living on this earth is mankind. Mankind is manipulating our environment. Can we, we have created this situation, we, have, we are standing at a precipice where we've created the situation, will we be able to survive? 私は少年の時代に父親からギリシャ神話の中にあるプロメテウスの話をよく聞かされました。When I was a young man, I heard a lot of important, important thoughts from Prometheus, Prometheus, the Greek Prometheus, from my father. まあ多くの方もご存知だと思いますが、プロメテウスという神様が火を知らない人間に対して、火を教える話です。So, God, fire, are are で、火は、火はあの知恵をも意味します。知恵ですね。知恵。The fire is the symbol for wisdom. そのプロメテウスが人間に火を教えたことを知ったゼウスの神が起こるわけです。And so Prometheus taught this fire, this wisdom to Zeus, the king of the gods. ゼウスはプロメテウスに対して人間に火を教えたことが人間にとって幸せになると思って教えたんだろうと。しかし大きな災いになるかもしれないんだぞと言いました。And Zeus said to Prometheus, Yes, it can bring us, it can bring us happiness and it can bring us understanding. However, you may end up, it's going to be a rocky road, and you may end up with some problems. プロメテウスはそのために永遠に岩山にくくりつけられて腹渡を高で高がついばんだという有名なギリシャ神話の話です。And therefore, Prometheus was a,、um, banned, sent away far, far away to the caves to be uh, uh, suffering uh, into eternity. しし What we've done in, in the history of mankind is we've created and adapted. On the premise of um, um, convenience. しかし同時に、えー、より強力な兵器を生み出しそして、えー、より大きなあ事故を起こす原発をも生み出しました At the same time, we've created terrible weapons, and in doing so, we've created terrible、um, destruction. 私が政治家を志した一つの理由は科学技術というものをきちっとコントロールすると、それは政治の仕事だと考えたからです。Why did I become a politician? I wanted to understand, I wanted to control nuclear. I wanted to figure out a way to control nuclear power. しかし、残念ながら、我が国の原発事故を防ぐことはできませんでした。And unfortunately, I learned through the Fukushima accident, it's impossible to control nuclear power. まあ、現在、アメリカや日本では原発の建設は止まっている、あるいは少なくなっています。あのどういう関係が少なくなっている原発の新しい建設がストップされているということですね。はいはいはいうん、あの between US and between Japan, in, among that relationship, presently, the creation of new nuclear power facilities is in general stopped. There is not a surge for creating more. しかし、いくつかの国では、独自のエネルギー源を持ちたいために、原発を新たに作る動きがまだ続いています。Unfortunately, there are other countries, aside from the US and aside from Japan, that believe that having nuclear is the answer. 例えば、トルコとかインドとかベトナムです。For example, India, Turkey, Vietnam. 現在、日本の原子力メーカーとアメリカの原子力メーカーが共同して、それらの国に新たな原発を
輸出をしようとしています。And right now, Japan, with the help and support of America, are working with various nuclear、um, makers in order to export that technology. しかし、今はそのことを恥じております。But right now, I'm terribly embarrassed about this. 今、それらの国にとっても、将来のことを考えれば、新たに原発を導入するのではなくて、逆に再生可能エネルギーの技術を導入する、そのことがより良いことだと信じるからです。What I believe now is that we need to think about the future of these countries, the future of these countries that are not prepared in case there was a nuclear accident. We need to promote nuclear, we need to promote renewables, natural,、um, renewable energy to these countries. あ心配をされて、えー、その再稼働に、えー、反対されていることを私もよく知っております。I'm very, very,、um, I'm keeping, I'm reading a lot of information and hearing a lot of information on all of, all of the activists and all of the citizens of Southern California that are working hard to prevent restart at San Onofre、um, nuclear power generating station. まあ、同時に、えー、アメリカにおいても、えー、再稼働させるべきだという人たち、あるいは企業が力を持っていることも知っております。And at the same time, he knows very well in America we have corporations and we have government agencies that are fighting, that are fighting to、um, implement restart. その状況は日本でも同じです。It's exactly the same in Japan. 多くの国でも同じ状況です。And it's the same situation all over the world. 私はあそうした世界の動きを見て、やはりこの原発について疑問を持つ、あるいはそれをやめた方がいいと考える世界の人たちが、やはり協力をしてネットワークを作って、えー、事故の危険性、あるいは原発のコストの高さを。世界の人々に知ってもらう努力をすべきだと考えます。What, I, what I'm thinking is the most important part to deal with this is to create a network, to create the conversations around the world to discuss this problem, discuss your doubts about nuclear power, the dangers, the inherent risks of nuclear power, but not only that, the financial costs which are ongoing and future. It is this network that we need to create. 今今3期目の原発を作ろうとしている台湾のそれに反対している人たちからも私に一度台湾に来て福島原発の事故について話してほしいという要請が来ております。Right now, he has a request from the people, the activists in Taiwan who are, about, who are fighting the construction of their third nuclear reactor. He has been invited there to please speak about the uh, terrible uh, Fukushima accident. ある意味でのスタートの会になることを期待しております。And so it is groups like this, this kind of meeting, this kind of conversation that we should all expect and provide around the world. It is this sort of beginning 
that is the beginning to the network I'm speaking about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, for not only coming here, but for sharing with us and doing so in such a personal uh, manner. I think sometimes, you know, we see things on TV or we watch them on the Internet, but we don't feel it as closely as, as we would if we were to experience it direct. And what you've shared is uh, very, very, very powerful. So I want to thank you.